Most of us have been under lockdown or social distancing measures for several weeks, if not months now. And for those of us who have a vegetable garden or have started a victory garden, getting a hold of seeds is still very difficult. I'm Tanya from Lovely Greens, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get more harvests with fewer seeds. When a lot of people grow things like spinach and lettuce and beetroot, they tend to sow the seeds direct in the ground. And traditionally you do that in a drill. So a long line and you sprinkle the seeds in really finely. And then when the seedlings grow up, you thin them out. So you take out all of the little seedlings in between the plants that you want to grow up to their full size. When you grow like that, you waste a lot of seed. And so the best thing you can do with saving seed and having more bang for your buck when it comes to the seeds in a seed packet is to actually sow seeds into modules first. Now, nearly every single type of vegetable can grow in modules. There are exceptions though. You shouldn't start off carrots or parsnips that way because the roots will get forked and they'll just be completely unusable by the end of the season. But things like greens and pumpkins and sweet corn and loads of other edibles can be started this way. And it's a really frugal way of using your seed, keeping your seedlings protected from the elements, keeping them protected from pests like slugs and rabbits, and making sure that you have a really successful growing year. This is a tray of 82 one inch modules and you can see from this far end that I've already started planting out some seedlings. Now the rest of these in here are a mixture of spinach and Asian vegetables, leafy vegetables including pak choy and on the end here I have some chard as well. I'm going to show you how I plant these out in just a little bit but first of all let's get some more seedlings on the go because that's one of the most important things with growing a vegetable garden is to keep it coming. You don't sow all of your seeds at once, otherwise you have a massive glut, and then afterwards an empty garden. And you waste a lot of food that way, you'll waste your seeds, you'll waste your time. So sow seeds little and often for things like greens and radishes and beetroot, things like that. There are some crops like pumpkins and sweet corn that you would sow once and then let them grow the entire year. But there's quick growing crops that are really important to grow as well that you need to succession sow. You can start seeds in practically any container providing that it has drainage and that it's food safe. And you can use recycled yogurt pots, you can use uh, paper pots like these, which I've been using a lot of this year. And you can also use modules. And modules, they last a long time, so I'm not concerned about them being plastic for that fact. They stack together and also they make sowing seed really economical because you can fill each one of these little modules sow the amount of seeds in that you want, grow them on, and then plant them out. And then in that way, you can stretch out a packet of seeds much further than if you were sowing into drills and thinning. Now, to choose modules, there are various different sizes, and I've got two sizes here. And you choose module size based on the size of the seedlings when you plan to plant them out. So for example, a lot of the greens like lettuces and spinach, they grow perfectly fine in these one inch modules. And you save compost, you save watering, and you save seeds if you use the smaller one. The larger ones like this, these are great for things like starting off your sweet corn or beans in and they need a little bit more space when it comes to their roots and so it makes sense to use these guys. Getting seeds started in modules is really easy. 
to just put your tray into something that's going to catch the compost and then fill it with a good quality multi-purpose compost that's peat free and this is a, a type of compost that's made out of wool and bracken and is completely organic but there are lots of other different types of brands and and alternatives in other regions as well now once it looks all full press the compost down there's a lot of air in there and plant roots need air but not that much they need more bulk to grow into and then you'll want to top it up again and anything that slides off the side will go into this container and you can just pour it right back into the compost bag the next step is actually sowing the seeds into the compost and I have a few things prepared. So first of all, plant labels, very important. You will not remember what you sowed, guaranteed. It's happened to me many times that I've forgotten. I've got three different types of seeds here and I have a pencil. You could also use your finger or a, or a professional dibber and this is to make holes in the compost for you to put the seeds in. I'm using three different types of seeds in one module here because I don't want to have an entire module of most things at one time. That will just mean a lot of things cropping at the same time, too much for us to eat. And as far as depth is concerned, you want to make the holes about two to three times deeper than the seed is thick. And that should be plenty of depth for it to grow, not push out of the soil, and to have plenty of space for the roots. So I put the seeds in for the lettuce and covered it and you can see the seeds for the four rows of spinach in and the beetroot there too. So two of each in each of the modules and then just cover them up gently. And then after this I'm going to take them into the greenhouse. This is where the tray and the seedlings are going to live for the next month, give or take. And in fact, the seedlings that we looked at earlier, so the Asian green vegetables and the spinach, these were all sown about a month ago. So they were sown on the 23rd of March. And this is how big they are after just over a month. These are ready to go outside now. But until then, the seeds that we've sown today are going to be in this really cozy environment where I can keep an eye on them, keep them well watered, and they can grow without any kind of interference from cold weather or pests outdoors. And as we saw with the sowing, we didn't use very many seeds. And so we have loads of seeds left to use over the summer and into the autumn and to basically stretch that seed packet out as far as we can go because we don't know when seeds are going to be available and in some cases some of them are completely sold out until next year so we've got to make do with what we have. The next step with this is to give it a really good water and you need to use a watering can that has a fine rose head on it. If it has a direct stream it can move the compost around and basically wash the seeds out so just a gentle water you can also water from below as well so you could just set this tray in a tray of water and it can absorb the water from the bottom either or it's up to you now i feel really fortunate to have a greenhouse to start my seedlings off in and you can see loads and loads of different seedlings here and it's a really important setup for my gardens but if you have a smaller space or you don't have access to a greenhouse or you don't want a greenhouse you can still start your seedlings off in the same manner indoors put them into something that will contain water so in a tub a plastic tub so that water doesn't get all over the place and put your seedling trays or pots in a warm sunny window or you can put them under grow lights and then grow them in the same way but indoors so some of the first to start popping up from the compost are arugula or rocket it's very speedy so three days ish and it should pop up even outdoors and then you'll start to see things like lettuce seedlings popping up within seven to ten days beans can take around that same time it's very quick and what you'll start to see is little leaves seed leaves popping up out of the soil and then eventually over the course of a couple of weeks then you'll start to see true leaves coming out 
and then they'll start getting bigger and bigger and they'll fill up these modules fairly quickly. And as you can see with this tray here, this took a month for the seedlings to get to this size. Not very long at all. And I know they're ready to go outside because I can see roots coming out of the drainage holes underneath. Most leafy green vegetables are really tough compared to other vegetables. And they don't need as much in the way of hardening off as say tomatoes or more tender plants. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant these guys out directly and I'm going to cover them with a fleece tunnel. So fleece will keep them nice and cozy warm, kind of simulate the greenhouse conditions, but also give them protection from birds and, and other elements of the wind in particular. So I've just brought the seedlings outdoors and I'm going to plant three rows of veggies in this bed. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space for the lettuce and it's still growing in the greenhouse. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the bamboo cane to keep a straight line. I've got a digging tool. I'll give it good water at the end and then I'll put the fleece tunnels over them to protect them. And I should also say that leafy greens like this are subject to flea beetle damage at this time of the year as well. So the fleece will help to keep those beetles off. It won't do anything about slugs or snails, so you're gonna have to take other precautions for those and they will love leafy greens like pak choy. You get lots of little holes in them and wonder where it comes from most likely slugs and snails but if they're really tiny that's flea beetle damage right let's dig these guys in they're going to go in at different distances the pak choy needs about a foot space in between each plant the lettuces will need only four to six inches the spinach can also go in at that closer range and then i'll populate this entire bed and before we know it this should be absolutely bursting with green Well, that is how I actually grow the majority of my seedlings and aside from the benefits of being able to control the watering and the growing conditions I'm able to save on seeds so I can really stretch out a packet of seeds much longer than if I was direct sowing into the garden. Now this year I'm trying to grow in another way and that is with a veggie pod and I have one on my patio now and in that video of me planting out the seedlings into this bed you could see that it could be really bad on your back and in fact it was really sore when i was doing that so having an elevated growing area that is protected is not only good for your back but it's kind of simulating both the greenhouse and a raised bed at the same time so i'm really interested to continue growing in it but so far the seedlings that i've direct sown into there are doing really really well and if you're interested in picking up one of your own i'll leave a link down in the video description and you can head over and have a look on their website and if you do end up buying one make sure that you use the code that i'll put down there too because you'll get a free winter cover so you'll be able to continue growing over the winter if you have any questions whatsoever about the sowing, growing, and planting out, and ways to save seeds, do leave a comment down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video and found it really informative and you're able to use it with your own garden this year. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.